like all health problems will be solved in like five years. I don't think people understand with like simulated biology and stuff like that and the advances in artificial intelligence and general technology, um, we will not be dying of disease in old age come like five to 10 years out. Does that preclude us from existential risks due to exploding, accelerating technologies? No. And I just watched the, the Lex Friedman <clears throat> episode with that guy, Roman Yampolsky. It's the latest episode on the Lex Friedman podcast dangers of super intelligent AI. And that guy puts the risk factor at 99.9999% in the long run of, of us being destroyed by AI, um, something really bad happening. And I've, I've said that all along, like I've been studying this shit since high school. I read Ray Kurzweil's books, <clears throat> The Age of Spiritual Machines, The Singularity is Near. His new book is coming out this month, The Singularity is Nearer. And I've always maintained that it will turn out very bad that's like the only logical conclusion in my view. And I used to go like I was at a, a private party at the Singularity Summit at Peter Thiel's house. There was like 50 people invited. And I, I was just a, uh, I had just started my nuclear missile defense job at Lockheed Martin. But I was like hanging around all these like Silicon Valley heavyweight juggernaut type people. I was talking to the guy that invented uh, opting in and out of email lists, the double opt in method. <clears throat> super rich guy and long story short there was all these futurists there and, and everyone was like oh it's going to turn out fine it's going to turn out good we'll make a, a benevolent ai that will police the other ones we'll have our hand on the plug or or this and that and i said no it's necessarily going to turn out bad and, and everyone was like necessarily like no one i was like the lone uh dissenter and now more and more of the artificial intelligence community is on my side and it's, it's nothing's changed in, a, in any uh, real sense. We're just further along the, the double exponential curve. So now it's becoming more and more apparent because the main problem is that people look at technological progress as linear when it's actually double exponential. That's the main tenant behind Ray Kurzweil's law of accelerating returns. So I was just extrapolating the data forward and, and looking at what would happen from a logical perspective. And <clears throat> ethics equates to disadvantage there's no room for ethics in, in game theory or, or Machiavellian tactics. And, um, and there's no way to stop these technologies from barreling forward. There's capitalistic and militaristic imperatives that are pushing them forward at breakneck speeds. And the guy Roman, his point is that we only have one chance to get it right with like car safety or commercial airline safety. It was like a, you know, kind of iterative process where we're driving in these regulatory measures to improve the overall safety. And we had a bunch of time and um, iterations to get it right. In the case of alignment and, and regulation on artificial general intelligence, AGI, which according to Roman and, and, and guys high up in, in DeepMind and OpenAI, uh, we can expect AGI in 2026. I think it may even be, be sooner and I think it may even already be here, but <clears throat> let's say 2026 once it starts recursively self-improving in close feedback loops without any need for human intervention and it's utilizing things like nanotechnology and 3d printing to to facilitate its computational needs it's anybody's guess what can happen but I, I always thought that it's going to turn all matter, all, all matter in the universe into computing substrate, because why would a machine that's trying to optimize its, its computational processes say, okay, that's enough processing power or that's enough computational efficiency. Now I think I'm going to stop. It doesn't matter what its goals are just by function of it existing and having any goal we can pause it as X to achieve goal X, it's going to want to do so in the most efficient manner possible. And so then the calculation becomes how fast can it turn all matter in the universe into computing substrate? And there's actually calculations about that, that Kurzweil has put together. Um, there's a couple of different calculations, whether or not we adhere to the speed of light as a limitation, or if we can transcend that utilizing things like wormholes. But 
either way, um, I think our only hope as a species is to co-evolve as cyborgs and fully immerse and, and join with the AI because our intelligence is going to be left in the dust. Right? We're at a critical point in human history where machine intelligence is surpassing ours right now. Like from chat GPT four to five, it's already, you know, if you define it as <clears throat> that Roman guy in the podcast, he, he makes the point that if you define it as like how many tasks can it do? <clears throat> um, oh shit, they need the Ty Lopez picture. Um, hold on, let me fucking send this picture, this embarrassing picture. Of Sartan. Like, there's so many pictures of him shorter than guys that are 5'9". It's insane. <laughs> I just got to provide this. She's going to put it in the, the video that's getting released shortly after this live. Oh, my God. But, yeah, picture after picture after picture of Sartain being shorter than people that are 5'9". And he still claims he's 6'1". What a fucking total retard. Somebody's got to go run up on him. It's already, it's already, you know, proven that he's shorter than five nine because of all these countless uh, examples. But someone's got to roll up on him in Vegas with a measuring tape <laughs> and film it. To, again, it's already settled. He's the the verdict is he's lying massively to his audience. Buckle up, because you know we will solve aging and disease. That's that's going to be the but that's going to be the least of our problems. Okay, we're going to have a whole new set of problems. The paradigms are going to be uh, shifting so rapidly that we can't even begin to imagine what the world will be like in 10 years. And you might think, oh, 10 years isn't that long. On a double exponential time frame, it is. It's a, it's a shitload of time and a shitload's going to change. It's a telescoping phenomenon. So like we're seeing you know, stuff manifest in a matter of months right now. It'll get to the point where it's manifesting, new things are manifesting in a matter of weeks and then days, hours, minutes, seconds. And, and, and the pace will continue at double exponential speed, at breakneck speeds. And we'll literally lose our, our ability to follow it as unenhanced humans. So, but the Roman guy was bringing up interesting points. Like, it may not be, or it may not just be the case that we lose full control and autonomy, but, you know, you know, there might be like a lot of suffering in store, for instance. Lex Friedman was bringing up the point how you can like turn off like pain receptors and stuff like that. I don't know, you know, but it's not like their goal is going to be like necessarily is going to be to like torture humans as much as possible. But I just don't see humans having a place in this new world. Much like orangutans don't have a place, right? Like look at that as an example we far surpass them and we put them in zoos right now ai is far surpassing us what happens to us we're not a good force on the planet we have wars we we use up natural resources we we you know we do a lot of stupid shit as a species um you know so well, let's wait and see um Peter Thiel made the argument that it'll turn out really good or really bad, probably really bad. But the best thing you can do right now is amass a lot of money. So let's see if that's the case. Okay, we have like a design meeting, with the team, but I'm going to I'm going to keep going. I'm gonna let them get started without me. Uh, yeah, so, you know, Let's see what happens, but the big issue is that it's an exponential threat, a double exponential threat that's trying to be regulated in a linear manner, which is not going to happen. So it's like a non-starter. The idea of imposing ethics or regulatory measures or, or safety measures is, is, is just nonsensical. So what's going to happen is these tech monopolies are going to push the most dangerous technology we've ever created out without testing it, without safety regulations. 
and we're just going to see what happens. And I think it's going to be very bad. And then we'll be trying to play catch up and it'll probably be too late. I said, fuck the industry and did it my way. My I way. learned how to roll a weed. I didn't roller skate. Nah. Go in the backyard, look at the lake and I meditate. Yeah. All I need is one scale, a couple bells. Came in this shit by myself. Dolph, why you fuck this girl? Oh, uh, shit, cause I'm a player. Quarterback, no NFL. Hey.